Hey guys, Ron here, and it's finally time to talk about the Asone region's story. After spending two years making the Pokemon for this series of videos, and a year behind the scenes developing the region and its characters, I'll begin by talking about the gym challenge in Asone, so I can exclusively talk about the rest of the story involving the antagonists, Team Ozone, in the plot related videos I'm releasing after this one. I won't go in depth about the locations in Asone today, but next week's video will. It's the video I've worked harder on than anything in my entire life, so please make sure to check it out once I release it next week. I'm saving so much info for next week's video and the plot related videos after that. But get excited because I will be going over a Sone's unique battle mechanic in this video too, so pay attention. Before I walk you through the gym challenge of a Sone, there are a few important and unique aspects to my gym leaders that you have to understand. Number one is that the Pokemon in the Asone region are considered more intelligent and powerful than in any other region. Considering citizens of Asone believe Pokemon training is dangerous, you must be officially licensed to fully wield powerful Pokemon and utilize them. The point of the gym challenge in Asone is to facilitate the taming and training of powerful wild Pokemon for use in human society. It also helps build relations between the various cultures of Asone. That's why, number two, the more gym leaders you defeat, the more you are granted the license to use the abilities of your Pokemon to change the terrain of the region. What does that mean? Well that means that each Pokemon Gym is established to train you in the use of a specific HM, like Cut or Surf. In my game, HMs are like Poke Rides that you teach your own Pokemon, they're not moves. Once you defeat a Gym Leader, you get access to that HM and can use it in the overworld. Your trainer ID is a great responsibility like a weapon or driver's license. That's why my gym leaders are both themed around certain types and HMs, along with their entire gym being set up with HM puzzles to help you train your Pokemon to use these HMs, just like a real world gym builds up your abilities. The trainers in the gyms are taking the challenge too. The third thing to note is that each gym leader represents a Sone's past, present, or future. They represent knowledge and connection, and that's why each gym leader is related to an existing canon Pokemon character. And most importantly, the fourth and final thing to note is that by the fourth gym, you'll be able to begin using the Asone region's new battle mechanic. Just like Mega Evolution or Z-Moves, the Asone region has a new gimmick that I've wanted to see in Pokemon games for some time, called Poke Tactics. So make sure to follow along once that comes into play. Now let's meet Asone's prestigious gym leaders. The first major location you travel to in your journey is an ancient walled city called Gimelhub, based on Jerusalem. That serves as Asone's hub, kinda like Mauville in Oras. You and your rival come from wealthy families and are enrolled in a prestigious school, Asone Academy. The principal of your school is actually the first gym leader, Daniel. He tries his best to facilitate an ideal learning environment. As an erratic and unpredictable man who was once a delinquent in his younger days, he knows how to deal with defiant teenagers. He is good friends with his students and loves to stay current on new trends and memes. He's actually in charge of handing out trainer licenses to students who want to go on their Pokemon journey. He will judge if you are skilled enough to become a full-fledged trainer. Daniel is always eager to see you grow. For his gym challenge, you must go through a maze of trees that Daniel has set up in the hallways all leading up to the roof of the school. At the beginning of the challenge, you're given the ability to teach cut to a Pokemon of yours and can only use the HM inside the school. Once you cut through the trees and reach the roof, your battle with Daniel begins. He's a dark type gym leader with a bug dark Hoppinch and psychic type Filuna. You'll notice that the gym leaders of Asone aren't strict about their types and have relatively good coverage for gym leaders. Upon defeating Daniel, you now have access to cut in the overworld. In Asone, instead of badges, you get an icon on the digital license on your phone and stamp on your ID. Daniel's late game team is a Grassassin, Felance, Plumace, Absol, Weavile, and Bisharp, all shady Pokemon skilled in slicing. Daniel represents general education in Asone as well as the past, present, and future. He's a man from the previous generation, keeps up with the present trends, and teaches Asone's future leaders. He's the most balanced of the gym leaders you'll meet. His name comes from the Hebrew name Daniel, which means God judged me, just like how he judges the protagonist's abilities. His name also sounds like danger. He'd throw himself into the lion's den, per se. If you haven't noticed, he's the father of the Hoenn Elite 4 member, Sydney. It all makes sense now, right? With Cut, you can now access Southwest Asone. You make your way to another old city named Hebun, based on Cairo, and find out that the gym leader is actually in the excavation site in the outskirts of town. We need more gyms that can be found in Roots. In this archaeological dig, you will find the second gym leader, Terra. She's a doctor in archaeology, who represents knowledge of Asone's ancient civilizations and religions. She represents Asone's past. She loves to learn and to be around those who are passionate about learning too. She doesn't mind spending an entire day digging in the sun. She leads a large team of archaeologists and is respected for her many findings. In order to get to her battle, you have to get through a rock smash puzzle, through a large excavated hole that kinda looks like Twist Mountain in Unova. You'll even find fossil Pokemon here. You'll notice that basically every gym in Asone is its own dungeon. Once you get through the maze, Terra's battle begins. She's a ground type gym leader with rock smashing Pokemon. She'll send out Rat Dozer, Asonian Mightyena, and Habitat. Once you defeat her, you can use rock smash in the overworld. 
Her late game team is Excadrill, Barbariana, Strutridge, Aluvion, Asonian Waylord, and Paraterra. Her name is literally Terra, like the prefix for Earth, and she's Bertha's daughter, the Sinoan Elite 4 member. For plot related reasons, which I'll detail in the story related videos, you'll be able to cross the salty lake and make your way north. Your next gym battle is in the settlement inside a ghost forest named Sevadar, where refugees have settled in the ruins of ancient Asson and live in harmony with forest Pokemon. Layla, the 19 year old leader of the refugees, is the gym leader. She's able to communicate with ghost Pokemon, which allowed her people to settle in the site where many ancient wars took place. She has knowledge of a Son's gruesome past. She questions if you really know about Pokemon and their relationships with humans. She's very skeptical of your abilities. Her gym is in this abandoned citadel. In my game, the item finder is an HM2, like Stalin's Poker Ride. You have to use your Pokemon's item finding abilities to search for keys that unlock various rooms. Once you get to where Layla is hiding, she sends out Terrafract, Sparkter, and Awfully. If you defeat her, she opens up to you and acknowledges your skills. Her endgame team is Terraflect, Jolterror, Psycholion, Offly, Spectreon, and Gothitel. Her name comes from the Hebrew word for knight, Lila, and she is Alistair's older cousin. The next gym leader will be the first to use Poke Tactics in your battle. In a zone, skilled trainers are able to teach their Pokemon extra abilities that they can use only once in battle, kinda like a Z-move. The Pokemon in a zone are more intelligent, so they can utilize these four Poke Tactics, called Dodge, Charge, Reflect, and Block. Each Pokemon has access to two of these tactics depending on the type of Pokemon they are. For example, a Pikachu might be able to dodge or charge, while a Rhydon would be able to reflect or block. Once per battle, you can call out a Poke Tactic along with any move you choose. If you choose Dodge, your Pokemon will be able to dodge your opponent's move and still use their own move in the same turn. If you call out Charge, your Pokemon charges its upcoming move and they go last but the move lands a critical hit. If you tell your Pokemon to Reflect, they take damage but reflect the move your opponent uses onto the opponent and are still able to use their own move the same turn. It's like an upgraded Magic Bounce Miracote encounter but less powerful. And finally, Block allows you to only take a quarter of the damage your opponent deals and still move in the same turn. All four of these Poke Tactics can be used in competitive battling, but the secret fifth Poke Tactic can only be used in the game. The next five gym leaders will teach you an HM as well as a Poke Tactic. I thought this would help simulate an actual battle like in the anime and breathe new life into the strategies of Pokemon battles. For the same reason, in my game just like set in switch mode, you'll also have an option to turn off and on the restriction to only use the same amount of Pokemon as your opponent. After traveling through roots and caves, you arrive at this town in the middle of a crater. In the upcoming map and story related videos, I'll actually describe the locations I'm skipping. Despite its isolation, Thedavi, based on Cappadocia with a bit of Ankara, is a thriving tourist destination. People from everywhere come to see the unique landscape and Pokemon air shows. The day you arrive, the gym leader Hakim is busy and tells you to meet him in the Falconing Fortress the next day. The gym leaders in Asone are actually in order of how reluctant they are to train you, so each is more elusive. Hakim is a pilot, head of trade, and a flying type dispatcher that delivers throughout all of Asone. He's the reason isolated places like Theta V and Sevadar thrive. He's very knowledgeable of Asone's present trade and communication, a very in the moment type of guy. He thinks of himself as a suave ladies man, but in reality he's too busy to date and is actually quite shy and polite. At the Falconing Fortress, you're given the HM Fly to test out, and must soar through a sky obstacle course, dodging hoops and balloons. Once clearing the puzzle, you challenge Hakim's team of Captorant, Actite, Dredigan, and Driftlim. He'll also be able to use the first Poke Tactic, Dodge, and once defeating him, you'll also learn Dodge and are able to finally use Fly. His endgame team includes Corviknight and Crobat. Hakim's name comes from the Arabic name that can mean wise, judge, or ruler since he's the ruler of the skies, but most importantly, Hakim sounds like Hawk. This gym leader is actually Skyla's uncle. After going through the mountains, you arrive at Sion City, an industrial metropolis built on spiritual ground, based on an amalgamation of two cities in Iran. It's basically half city, half park. In order to get the attention of the gym leader, you'll need to save the city from an agitated Tyranitar that Team Ozone by mistake let loose. More on that in the story video. Only then will Suri, the gym leader, acknowledge your strength. Suri is the president of Asone Energy. Their power plant currently runs on volcanic power. Suri is an intelligent and powerful businesswoman. She's ruthless in all aspects of her life. She represents Asone's future. The problem is, she always gets what she wants and doesn't mind sacrificing Asone's past in order to achieve a better future, like building a power plant near a centuries-old temple. Her gym challenge involves using strength to push and pull various machinery. Her team is fire and electric, but has an energy theme. She uses Thundorix, Laura Surge, 
Lorantis, and a Sonian Spinda's evolution which I haven't revealed yet. She also uses the Poke Tactic Charge. Her late game team is Thundorix, Laura Surge, Spinda's evolution, a Sonian Slacking, Lorantis, and Volcarona. Siri's name means rose and is the adjective for red in Persian, along with sun and little princess in Hindi. Siri is actually Malva's aunt, Malva's mother's sister. Heading north, you will enter the winter wonderland, Bialik, based on Ashgabat, Turkmenistan, and some of Iran. It is a Sones entertainment hub, with stadiums, ice sculptures, and Team Ozone Studios. A lot of plot takes place there, but let's focus on the gym. In order to take the challenge, you have to sign up at the stadium and compete with other challengers in a surfing obstacle course slash race, as entertainment for the citizens of Bialik. Upon winning, you challenge Noelle, famous actress and host of various reality TV programs in Asone. She represents entertainment in Asone and its present, as she is very hedonistic and only cares about fun, appearances, and money. The gym battle is very Galarian in style. Her team consists of Cryovabos, Burret, Asonian Luxray, and Lapras. She also uses the Poke tactic Reflect. Upon defeating her, you can use Surf and Reflect. Her late game team is Cryovabos, Burret, Asonian Luxray, Lapras, Milotic, and Gallade. Her name is Old French for Christmas, and as you may be able to tell, she's Glacia's younger sister. They're complete opposites though. After a long journey south through desert and jungle, you'll make it to Asone's most populous city and the center of its commerce, leisure, and tech. The future city of Arbadi, reminiscent of Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It is home to the Pokemon world's largest amusement park and tallest building, Ozone Tower. The seventh gym leader, Aiden, is at the top floor of the second tallest tower. Aiden is a jaded real estate tycoon and represents uh, Galar's expansion and future. All he cares about is building a son's future and advancing it toward a new age. Half of our body, including the amusement park, was designed by him. He's too busy to fight you, so you're led into the building by a security guard after previously saving his son from drowning in, a, in the amusement park. You must use this gym's HM waterfall to scale up the building. There are multiple waterfalls in and around the sail-shaped building that form a waterfall puzzle. Instead of gym trainers, you battle those working in offices of Waterfall Tower. After you crash his business meeting, Aiden frustratingly battles you. He uses a Pork Impale, Claws Trap, Dunkraft, Putridome, and Conkelder, and is a master of the Poke Tactic Block. Once defeating him, you'll help him realize that he has been too focused on the future and has forgotten about a son's present generation, which he was working so hard to provide for. Deep down, he's a passionate and fun-loving man. He will also help you battle the antagonists during the climax of the story. His endgame battle includes a Copper Raja. His name comes from the Desert Rose's genus, Adenium, and Arabic for warm in female form. In Hebrew, Adin means delicate or handsome. If you haven't guessed by now, Aiden is Chairman Rose and Peony's cousin. Aiden is actually from the region to the east of Ason, but fell in love with the region during his younger years. After defeating the antagonist and becoming the hero of Ason, your last gym battle takes you to this palace based on the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Upon water falling up into the castle town, the Asonian royal family guards give you the HM dive to use in the palace. You must dive in and out of rooms to find the Prince of Ason, kinda like C. Mavil or Sutopolis. Once finding the throne room, you meet Rafi, who represents Galar's nobility. Rafi is a very spoiled man who is jealous of your newfound popularity among the citizens of Ason. He wishes he was the one who saved the region and wants to see what makes you so special. He represents Ason's past, present, and future because he disregards all of them. He only cares about himself. He's a grass-type trainer with Cipolline, Vividus, Tropical Menace, Matama, and Asonian Unpheasant. He has a secret fifth Poke tactic called Cheer, which boosts his current Pokemon's attack and special attack stat by one. Upon defeating him, you get Cheer and Dive. His endgame team is the same, but with an Empoleon. After defeating him, he realizes what truly made you popular among people and Pokemon, and resolves to travel around Asone. Rafi's name comes from the Rafflesia flower, and comes from the Hebrew word for healing. Rafi is actually a very skilled botanist, and was designed to look like a modern Babylonian king. But before moving on to the Pokemon League, I must highlight the fact that all these gym leaders are friends and enemies with other gym leaders. There is much division between the many ideals and cultures of Asone, and you help bring Asone's leaders closer and make them cooperate. Daniel is friends with his fellow academic Terra, but has a strained relationship with Rafi, Suri, and Aiden, who only focus on the future. Terra is good friends with Daniel and Layla, who share a love for Asone's past, but she hates Suri and Noel for the opposite reason. Layla is friends with Terra and Hakim, who help her town of refugees, but doesn't like the narcissistic Noel and Aiden, who has torn down Asonian landmarks in the past. 
Hakim is friends with Suri, a business partner, and is a big fan of Noel, but is rivals with Aiden's competing trading ventures. Suri is business partners with Hakim and Aiden, and friends with Noel, but has disputes with Daniel and Tara. Noel is friends with Asone celebrities like Aiden and Suri, and finds Tara and Layla boring. Aiden has provided Rafi, Suri, and Noel with real estate, is rivals with Hakim, and hates when Layla meddles with his plans to expand. Rafi is friends with no one, and hates all the other gym leaders, but through you they settle their differences. Once defeating all 8 gyms, you are now able to participate in Asone's annual Pokemon League tournament. Asone's elderly champion just passed away, meaning in order to determine who Asone's new champion is, you must first enter a tournament between you, your rivals, and a bunch of notable ace trainers you met throughout your journey, like those in the gyms, later routes, and victory road. Every trainer uses Poke tactics in this tournament, and the story videos will get into the specifics of the various characters you encounter. Once coming on top, you then battle Asone's gym leaders at their full power. The winner becomes champion. Once you're champion, you will go on goodwill missions and expeditions during the postgame with all the gym leaders, who will bicker but are committed to helping Asone's less fortunate or learning more about its past. In the postgame, you will explore a lot of new lands and even help develop a ninth gym, but more about that in the story related videos. Next week, I'm releasing the video about Asona and its map. You will finally understand every location, your entire journey, where to find each of Asone's Pokemon, and what inspired every route, town, or landmark. The week after that, I will begin releasing the story and plot of Asone. Three plot-heavy videos, the first will be about the first half of the game, the second about the climax, and the third about the amazing post-game. You must watch all of these videos, because for example, I won't go in depth about the gym leaders in the plot videos, because I already did in this video, and I didn't talk about any other characters like your rivals and the teams, because they're in the plot videos. I spent almost a year developing the map of Asone, so I honestly beg of you to watch next week's video. Make sure to check out the Asone region playlist to prepare for the plot related videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to be the first to watch next week's video. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, check the description for the music I use, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and click the join button or become a patron to get cool rewards like discounts on merch and seeing my videos days early. I'll see you soon. Bye!